Hello, everyone. I'm Nadia Abahad. As mentioned, I'm a PGY3 from the University of Texas at Houston. I'd like to thank the panel and CVI for this opportunity to present an atypical presentation of this in subsequent management of spontaneous triple vessel coronary artery dissection in a young man. So this is a 47-year-old African-American male, past medical history of tobacco and alcohol abuse. He states he was awoken from sleep with a crescendo substernal pressure. He also endorsed concurrent nausea, vomiting, and diaphoresis. Due to the nature of his symptoms, paramedics were called to the scene, vitals are shown, and he's remarkable for tachycardia. So this is his EKG, which is notable for two millimeter ST segment depressions in the inferior leads, as well as V5, V6 in the ST depressions in AVR. So the patient was transferred directly to the cardiac catheterization lab for emergent coronary angiography with an intent to revascularize. Via a right transradial approach, a six French AR2 diagnostic catheter was used to selectively engage the right coronary artery. The RCA as shown is a small non-dominant vessel with no angiographic evidence of atherosclerotic disease. Next, a six French EBU 3.5 guide catheter was used for engaging the left coronary system. After advancing the catheter to the proximal ascending aorta, radiographic contrast injection prior to the osteo left main engagement showed contrast stain within the coronary vessels. Thus, a non-selective angiogram from the left cusp was performed, showing triple vessel non-flow limiting possible spontaneous coronary artery dissection of the left main LAD and left circ. No angiographic evidence, once again, of coronary atherosclerosis. So given the high risk for the iatrogenic pro propagation of the dissection, conventional intracoronary imaging modalities such as IVIS and OCT were not used. So here are some still images starting from the, uh, sorry, going back. Starting from the top left and progressing clockwise. Frame one, if you direct your attention here, it nicely uh, illustrates the initial dissection flaps that was seen upon engagement of the left coronary system. Frames two and three show that despite such proximal involvement of the dissection, there's no limit in the coronary flow of the left main LAD and CERC. Frame four once again shows the remnants of the respective dissection flaps. So moving back to the management of our patient, an intraaortic balloon pump was placed for hemodynamic support while the patient was being evaluated for cabbage by the integrated heart team. However, as the, is the case with patients, things change, and shortly thereafter, he developed refractory uh, angina and novel hemodynamic instability in the context of an already augmented cardiac output. So thus, an emergent on-pump cabbage was performed with anastomoses of the left internal mammary to the mid-LAD and SVG to the first obtuse marginal. SCAD was indeed uh, confirmed intraoperatively. So moving to the pathophysiology, how does SCAD occur? If you direct your, atten uh, your attention to the image to the right, the initial insult is induced either by a tear in the intimal layer of the arterial wall or by the rupture of the supportum vasovasorum seen in figure A. Subsequently, a separation occurs between the intima and the media, or the media and the adventition, which is seen in figure B. An intramural hematoma then forms as blood accumulates extraluminally and compresses the vessel, which thus com consequently reduces anterior grade blood flow, which is seen in figure C. Subsequent sequelae of SCAD can incur myocardial ischemia, infarction, ventricular arrhythmias, and even sudden cardiac death. So what are the risk factors for SCAD? It's thought to occur by a two-hip hypothesis. Intrinsic risk factors can include prolonged inflammatory states, connective tissue disorders, certain vasculitic pathologies. And of note, the Mayo Clinic has a large database over, involving over 200 patients that found iliac fibromuscular dysplasia was observed in 50% of the femoral angiograms that was performed. Given this, in a 2018 AHA statement, they actually recommended full body imaging. So if you direct your attention to the right of the screen, this is our patient CT angiogram, which of note did not reveal any aneurysmal dilatation or iliac fibromuscular dysplasia. His CTA head and neck was also unremarkable. The second hit, or the precipitant event, can include environmental factors, some of which we all go through every day, severe emotional distress, physical exertion, vasovagal maneuvers, and cocaine and alcohol use. In our particular patient, he's, his serologic studies were negative. However, his urine drug toxicology was positive for cocaine. So moving back to our patient, after his cabbage, the remainder of his hospital course was unremarkable, and he was shortly th discharged thereafter. He actually had subsequent outpatient follow-up visits and never endorsed recurrent or novel symptoms. So I like this diagram because it's a nice algorithm for the management of spontaneous SCAD. 
Given the paucity of supportive evidence, there's no standardized management. However, the, if the patient is clinically stable and does not have high-risk anatomy defined as proximal left main involvement or multivessel dissection, less is more and conservative therapy is recommended. Um, even within this uh, category, medical management is controversial, and in a 2018 AHA statement, uh, they recommend a discontinuation of systemic anticoagulation in the absence of other indications. Even the role of DAP is also unclear because there is an increased theoretical bleeding risk and lack of evidence benefit, and overall should be discussed by a case-by-case basis. The major cardiac and cardiac thoracic societies do support revascularization over medical management if there's ongoing hemodynamic instability, which if you follow the algorithm, that's depicted to the right of your screen. Cabbage is preferred over PCI with stable prox to vessel disease, left main involvement, and possible ongoing hemodynamic st instability, such as our patient, which once again is depicted to the middle of your screen. So to summarize, non-atherosclerotic SCAD can represent as much as 10.8% of STEMIs and should be considered as part of the differential with special attention given to reproductive age females with low CAD pretest probabilities. While optimal management is uncertain, in most SCAD patients, less is more, and conservative therapy is the preferred strategy. When faced with hemodynamic instability, revascularization should be considered, and when high-risk anatomy is involved, defined as left main or two-vessel disease, cabbage should be discussed. Special thank you to Dr. Sheratakis, Gwen, and Murrah for their expertise and edits. Thank you. I guess I loved your um, picture on the left, in which you didn't engage the vessel, but you did a non-selective injection. And that's maybe a great strategy for those people who suggest uh, suspected um, coronary dissection. You don't have to engage in the risk of causing left main occlusion. Uh, any other comments from? Uh... Well, <clears throat> I don't remember the last time I ever saw a man with scat. And um, so to me, I, I actually, I would have just dove in and engaged the left. I, I, I just, it, it was really impressive that you recognized it and didn't inject. Uh, right away. I mean, that, that, that was the most striking thing about me, but I guess me. That's a learning pearl. It's yeah. less is more sometimes. Was it during a uh, testing during potential engagement, or this was an intentional non-selective? Because sometimes you can give a small test, and you could see. Int it, it, Our operator was intentional, so non-selective. That's very impressive. I guess the concern here is long term, the grafts may not last because uh, the, hopefully the dissection is going to heal and then, but I guess the goal is to get him alive through this and then the rest, we'll see how it goes. So thank you very much, phenomenal case.